Hello everyone. Thank you all for joining today. Um, my name is Chigozi Okwara, aide to the Honourable Minister. So um, on the call today, we're going to be having a couple of um, um, people from the team and stakeholders that will join this call today. So um, I'll be taking you along on the conversation, which is the ENIF, the Nigeria Youth Investment Fund, the 110 billion naira fund that has been put out by the by the presidency and the federal ministry of youth development so um i'll be waiting for the key some key speakers to join in this call so that we have a very very robust and um, straightforward call for this so um it's going to be very interactive we're going to um, ask that a couple of you ask questions we're not just trying to come here to um um, speak and speak and speak. We're all youthful here. The ministry is open to um, listening to everyone. We want to do a lot of things much more better. Um, we're trying to make sure we we don't um, do things in silos. So, um, so if you if you have questions for me, you can bring it up here and we can continue. So, give us a few minutes. Let's get the rest of the of the speakers to join in, then we'll kick off. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. So, um, Chigo Zirokora here again, um, A to the Honorable Minister. I'll be driving this conversation forward, and we, we do, on this call, we have a couple of people that would introduce themselves as we go on. And, um, yeah, more people are going to join the call to speak more on the National Youth Investment Program. Um, I'll give a brief of the National Youth Investment Fund. And um, the, the, the National Youth Investment Fund is a financial program designed to provide access to grants, loans, and equity investments to young Nigerians. The fund has a total of 110 billion naira available for distribution, targeting youth aged from 18 to 40. The primary goal is to foster entrepreneurship, reduce youth unemployment, and encourage economic participation among Nigerian youths. The objectives of the ENIF. The first one is to reduce youth unemployment. We all know how youth employment right now in the country is, and the, and the federal government, through President Bola Metinubu, is making everything sure to make sure that youth employment is reduced drastically. And this, and this fund was, as we all know, was increased from about 75 billion naira to about 110 billion naira by the Honorable Minister, which was approved by FEC, which was one of the major milestones, um, accomplished by the, by the ministry. The second one is to provide access to affordable finance, which you know, the, this is a single digit loan, right? It's from 5% to about 9%, which is, very, very, it's as good as free, but we're going to make sure we're looking at scrutinizing the businesses that are applying for this. It's going to be a rigorous process, also very seamless and not strict, but we also want businesses to also come on board, mm -hmm. apply for this, and stand the chance to be part of this program, right? So um, we have another, another um, objective of this, which is su support sustainable growth, the NU program will be focusing on businesses, focusing on big, on, on businesses that will drive sustainable growth across the country, create job opportunities, and also encourage innovation and creativity. On this call with us today, we have the NU chairman. We're going to bring him up to speak. And, um, I, his name is Mr. Hakim Olopade. He's going to be joining. He's already on the, on the call right now. I'm going to, on, on mute him for him to go ahead and take us through the ENIF program. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me now? Oh, perfect. Yes, we can hear you now. Thank you. Ah, okay. All right. So, good evening, everyone. Uh, a, a good evening to all, afternoon to all the Nigerian youths on this uh, forum. Uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for your time. Um, like Chigo said earlier, uh, this is just like uh, an intro into the Nigerian Youth Investment Fund. Uh, we want to use this session uh, to educate us about what the program is all about and majorly to hear from uh, the participants and the youths 
on how we can do this better and one or two clarifications that they may have. Uh, before I go on, I would like also to introduce other members of the team that are here. We have Mr. Rijo Shekari, who is a member of the team. Uh, we have uh, Ms. Olufela Shoswa. Uh, she is also uh, one of uh, members of the team. And uh, Dr. Ezekiel, uh, who is also a member of the team. Uh, we also have so many other uh, support staff that are present on this call. So like Chigo Zia said earlier, um, the Nigeria Youth Investment Fund uh, was approved by uh, Mr. President in March this year uh, with an initial uh, seed capital of $810 billion. Uh, what that means is that um, there's still more to come, uh, depending on how successful we are uh, with this initial takeoff grant. And uh, what do we mean by successful? Um, it's based... Um, Beneficiaries pay back on time. As beneficiaries pay back, we have more money in the pool and the fund will be revolving. So the essence of this is to put in place a structure to ensure that the fund is revolving. And as beneficiaries benefit, uh, they also pay back and then more people can also uh, benefit from the fund going forward. So um, the fund is basically set up to uh, fund uh, business ideas, business initiatives and ventures of Nigeria youth. And uh, I'm sure some of us have been to uh, the application portal. And uh, we have the individual applications, which you can do as a sole proprietor or as a company. And we also have the ones for the cluster, in which you can come together in groups uh, as a cooperative or as an existing cluster or a new cluster. Um, We've uh, also uh, provided some information on the types of loans that we have. Uh, for the startups uh, businesses, uh, we have a minimum amount of 3 million and you can have a maximum of 20 million naira. Um, tenor depends and also uh, the moratorium period varies with the business plan and the type of business you, you venture in. Uh, for growth stage businesses and the existing business, uh, we have a minimum amount of uh, 15 million, which uh, can also go as high as 50 million naira. Uh, and lastly, we have uh, what we call the equity uh, investments and grants. And for that, we have a minimum amount of 10 million, and we can go as high as uh, 100 million. But as we all know, um, for equity investments, uh, that will typically take a longer time to process due to the due diligence and other uh, support services that we have to provide. Uh, for the loans, we may be able to roll that out quickly. Uh, one other important uh, thing I would like to inform members here is uh, the kind of uh, uh, training program we've institutionalized for the fund. Uh, we believe that uh, many of our applicants or maybe all needs to be trained uh, in one form of skill or the other. Um, even if you have an existing business, uh, by the time we do our initial assessments, we may be able to identify uh, some skill gaps that have to be filled. So uh, we can assure you that the government has made uh, provision for adequate training for all the beneficiaries. And uh, uh, proud to release of funds, we'll try and uh, provide general training or best folk training, as the case may be. Uh, so uh, in a nutshell, that's what uh, the program is all about. Um, we are all aware of what's going on in the country and the limited opportunities that the youths have. So this program is specifically for the youths. And uh, as we go along, um, we know there will be um, ways to improve, which we are hoping to. And uh, we'll try as much as possible uh, to meet the demands of the youth and uh, do it on a first-come, first-serve basis. Uh, I, I think I'll stop here and uh, allow others to speak and also take questions from the audience. Thank you very much. Chikoze, over to you, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Hakim. Thank you so, so much. Um, I'm going to call up another speaker on call, um, Mr. Rijo Shakiri. Please kindly come up on the call and uh, give us a brief so far on it. Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Richard. Yeah, 
My name is Rijo Shekari, like I was introduced. I'm part of the project management um, office. And like Mr. Chairman rightly said, this program has been put in place to give young people the opportunity to actualize their dreams. I am one person that does not believe that everybody must go to school or that everyone that goes to school must succeed in a particular way. And so this particular fund is to enable people's talents manifest. Somebody has an idea, probably just needs five million dollars to just probably write a script, go into the studio and do something. It might be a comedy, it might be whatever. So um, the scope of this fund cuts across different sectors from fashion to farming, from farming to um, what is the word, to manufacturing, people that are making shoes, people that are making sandals, people that are making adire. So just to let you know that um, there, there, there are no, uh, what do you call it? There's not, there isn't a straight jacket for what you can apply for. However, it will, it, there's what we call the cluster program, which is something that enables a group of people in a particular profession or a particular trade to benefit from economies of scale, wherein the cost of their production goes low simply because they are working together. So for, let's say, for example, people decide to have maybe tomato gardens or people decide to farm soya beans or something. And maybe each person just has one hectare. And it's not economical to get a tractor. But when they come together and they bring their 10, 15, 20 hectares together and come as a cluster, then it is cheaper for them to enjoy services that initially will have been, or rather hitherto will have been, um, prohibited for them. So one aspect of the application is for people that want to apply as individuals, whether it is um, you've never registered a business name or you have a business name or it's a limited liability company. It could be that you just have the idea and, you, and this is all you need to do. So some of these things will be looked at to see the authenticity of your application. And trust me, over the years, my experience has shown that um, through people's application, their readiness and the amount of data they provide, relevant data they use for and the production. Our desire is to ensure that we have a high turnover of successful businesses. That is why the training is very important. We want to look back at the end of 2025 December and say that so so amount of people got loans and in the first year at least 75 to 85 percent of them are thriving and uh, the another element of this um, whole project is the monitor evaluation so it's not just to give people money and okay let us allow this you be, be busy no there's going to be what you call a midwifing process your hands are held to ensure that your business succeeds um if you start with five million we hope that after two years you come and ask for 15 million because you want to expand you need to buy do more staff or you are now, or you want to buy another competitor. So these are the kind of stories we want to hear. Um, in the midst of uh, anxiety and gloom, there's tendency to be a lot of doubt. But um, I can assure you that this is a project that that has been well has been well thought out by people from the private sector, not by government people. People that have um, experience with SMEs, people that have experience with risk management, people that have experience with agriculture people that have experience with um, restructuring businesses and raising finance. So this team is not a team of people that just write policies and drop it on the shelf. No, these are people that have done similar work and have succeeded in different areas, either in government, either working with government or as private practice. So please, um, the even long after today's engagement, there are going to be avenues where people can ask questions. The applications are going to be ongoing, they're going to be unruly, and um, I encourage as many as possible to apply for this. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Mr. Rijo Shakiri. I'm sure the the audience is excited so far because, I mean, the experts that on this, we, I know, I know how long it took to make sure this comes out well. The Honorable Minister has been, has been looking forward to put together a solid team and not just roll out any type of program because of 
put, putting out a program sick. So there's been a lot of thoughts, a lot of thought process to this. This is not just about just giving funds and going. There's a lot of mentorship programs going on, a lot of training programs are going to go on and all. So this is the beginning of a lot of things going forward from the Federal Ministry of Youth Development. So I'm going to call on Mr. Osini. Mr. Osini, please kindly join the call to give a brief to the audience. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, my name is Dr. Ezekiel Osini. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, PMO. Um, first of all, let me clarify that uh, this program is not it's not been launched today because of whatever is going outside there. It is something that we've been on for quite a while. It's just a matter of coincidence that it is coming up today. So we've been on it for quite a while and uh, we took a lot of time to make sure that uh, this program is well packaged and that uh, is going to achieve the desired purpose. Uh, just in addition to what my colleagues have said, um, the, the program is coming, uh, in, in two main packages, the financial aspect and the non-financial aspects. Uh, the financial aspect involves the grants, the loan, and the equity. Why the non-financial aspect is coming uh, in form of mentorship, uh, market linkage, capacity building, and hard holding. And it's believed that um, this program will lead to massive job creation. It's going to improve the living standard of our people. Uh, and in many instances, we are going to have import substitution. We are going to conserve effects, especially for the raw material that we import from outside the country. Uh, we are going to contribute to our GDP. Uh, we are going to be able to harness the imbued skills and talents uh, that our youth possess for the good of our economy. Uh, the, the facilities will not come like um, what we get from commercial banks or other financial institutions. Um, this is much more liberal. Uh, the kind of request for collaterals, all kinds of conditions will not be involved in this. So the program is, de is designed to be, you know, to be friendly to the beneficiaries. And I really want to encourage every one of us that has, um, you know, entrepreneurial skill that we're doing something already or we, we, we are looking for fun to start something to take advantage of this. Uh, and it will be very nice that when we have access to this fund that we use it for that purpose because that is when we'll be able to achieve that national growth that we desire. That's why, that's why we'll be able to have a secure future, you know, for ourselves and for the country. Uh, and we do believe that, um, we have a lot of potentials in this country. Uh, we know very well that our youths are very, very hardworking. Um, they, they are always determined that whatever they lay their hearts on, they will always see that they succeed. So this, this fund, and the kind of support that will come from the other side, aside from the financials, will be to help our youths, you know, to succeed and be able to play in the global markets in whatever area that they are, you know, they decide to invest in. Um, from other aspects, the mentorship, the risk management, the capacity building, we're going to show you that you're going to have quality support in these areas. Uh, you're going to have linkage to the markets. You are a micro enterprise or an MS or an SME. You have access to the large corporates who will be able to take off your products from you, uh, create more market for you. So I want to encourage everyone here to please be part of this program, support it. And when we have access to the fund, let's also make sure we use it for the purpose meant for that we do not divert it for another cause. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Osini. Um, I'm sure everyone, I'm sure a lot of people on this call right now want to ask a lot of questions right now. And like we said, this is not supposed to just be um, a call for for just giving statements and talking and talking and talking. It's meant to be an engaging call. 
So um, we would like you to wave your hand if you want to ask any question. So we could like um, pull you up to to ask your question. There are a number of people that have requested to speak, but I will need you to react to wave questions. We have the we have the experts on this call right now, so um, we will need you to bring up the questions. If you've been filling the form. Are there things you wanted to see on the form? Are there a couple of things you would like to know? Okay. Um, Mr. The Crusader Henry Eguroje. Crusader Henry. If I pronounce your name wrong, apologies for that. So I'm adding you as a speaker right now. Okay. Hello, Mr. Crusader. Hi, good evening. Thank you very much for bringing good me Good evening, up. thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, the Honorable Minister and the President of the Federation for this wonderful program. And thanks for the opportunity to speak here. So I have, my name is Henry Aguaruji. I'm a businessman uh, based in Ondo State. I've been in the business ecosystem for over 10 years. And I think this is a wonderful program. At the same time, I love the fact that there is a lot of uh, things put in place to ensure that this doesn't end like the young and whereby people collect such funds and use for buying cars or for personal needs. But however, after going through the whole uh, form, I, there are some things I think I saw that I want to like ask questions that probably uh, the representative of the Honorable Ministers can, uh, I mean, do justice to clarify that. And that's the first one is uh, the entry level, right? I understand that the end goal of this program is to create new jobs. So, we want to uh, create new business and also uh, help our existing businesses to sustain what they've been building. But however, uh, I think uh, when it comes to the loan part, I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I'm just speaking for other people that might not have the point to speak here. I think uh, with the state of this country, it might be difficult. Someone like me, I can't at this level of the economy of the country. Trust me, I can't uh, uh, sign as uh, what's it called? as a guarantor for someone for loan, right? So I don't know if there is a way that uh, the reference, I mean, part of it can be probably like uh, made kind of like simple. Because uh, if I have to like look for two people in this economy, I'm not sure that it's easy for someone to say, oh, my myself, I'm struggling with my business. I have debt. I can't sit for, I mean, I can't sign for someone uh, to, to take loan. That is one that I think uh, maybe I just want to bring to your notice if there is uh, more that can be said about that. Uh, then the second part of it is that after looking through the form, I understand that the old program is of three categories, which is uh, the loan part, the grant part, and the equitable part of it. But then the actual form that is currently online is only uh, for the loan part. There is no where on the form whereby I may decide to say, okay, I'm not taking loan. I want to, I mean, apply for grant because we only have one form here and the form is, uh, requesting for monitorum and at the same time, uh, also, I mean, the repayment part, which means this form that we currently have out there is just for the loan alone. So that alone, again, I want to, I mean, ask if the other two forms are coming or if there will be an update on the existing form whereby you may choose to say, okay, I'm applying for the loan or I'm applying for grant. That is uh, the second thing. Then the, the third thing again that I want to ask, I think a couple of, I've been following up this space, I mean, talking about this whole program. And I there was a time, I think, was it yesterday or day before, when uh, it was told, I mean, we were told about the fact that, I mean, you must have been in the business uh, for a very long time, which I also think is also a barrier in the entry level. Uh, if we want to create new businesses, we, we may kind of like open the whole space to enable people. You, it might be a new idea generally, but then part of uh, supporting document might be okay, maybe showing evidence of you doing business in a very long time. Talk to someone like me, like I said, I've been doing business for about 10 years, and I may have opportunity for this uh, fund. I might say, okay, there's this uh, new thing I've been trying to be, which I believe, I mean, based on the economic situation, that oh, this will definitely help the country. Okay, instead of me, I mean, uh, what's it called, spend this money on my assistant business, let me create this new business idea. But then I have proof and evidence that I have been doing business for a very long time with evidence, I mean, everywhere, which I can submit as a supporting document. Because like I said, if the entry level is too difficult, I mean, it won't encourage people. It will encourage people to like get into the program. We want to create new businesses. That is what will make the dream of the minister to come to life. That want to have create new jobs, right? Then the last one that I want to like optional from this call is uh, 
the last one is about the availability of funds. I know we'll be Hello, talking Mr. about Mr. Harry, Mr. Harry, thank you so much. And trust me, if we I know if we let you on this call, you're going to ask more than ten questions. But I think with the three questions you you, you brought up right now, let's um deal with these questions first. I think that the, the first one was about the form and um the the what's it called now? People that are supposed to come stand in place for you to yeah. Yes, right? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, exactly. Sir. Then then also the second one was which one again? Just give me the point lines. Yeah, the first one, the entry level. I mean, talk, primarily talking about uh, the referee uh, requested for... The referees. The, so the second yes. one was about what? So he, uh, the, I mean, the option to like choose if I want to apply for grant or equitable uh, investment. The Equity. form is... Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So, um... I'm going to give this question to Mr. Akim. Mr. Akim, please kindly join the call to address this question. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Henry, uh, for the questions, the detailed and comprehensive questions. Um, I've also looked at the application form. Um, you're right. Um, we need to go into more details as to how to specify uh, for uh, the type of uh, uh, financing you want, whether loan equity or or grants. Uh, what we have here presently is just is just a link on the amounts. So, and I believe maybe you can also indicate in that place whether it's debt or equity. But we would do a drop down um, and modify this so that that adequately addresses uh, your your question and for others going forward. Um, on the issue of referee, uh, which links to collateral. Uh, I'm sure you will see that on the individual application portal, uh, we don't have anything like uh, collateral there. When you go to the clusters application page, uh, you will see that we have collateral structure. Yeah. Why is that? Is because um, for the cluster, the amounts we may put out there uh, may be large because we may be looking at businesses of maybe four, 40, 50, 100 people. In which case the support infrastructure and the funds we may release uh, may be quite huge. So for that one, uh, we may require a form of collateral structure. And we are very definitive about the use of word there. Collateral structure, it, it says um, a lot about what we are looking at. So it doesn't have to be like uh, you bring in property or not. Collateral structure can be around the offtake. It could be so many other form of innovative ways of securing the loan. So, but for the individual application, I believe which is where you belong, um, we haven't stated that you have to provide uh, a form of uh, uh, security. In terms of the referee, yes, um, we've said one or two referees. Um, they may not be guarantors, really, you know. Referees will be somebody that we can speak with, somebody we can engage with uh, when things start to go bad. Uh, and all of this depends on the kind of facility you are looking at and the kind of business you are in. So you may give us referee one and two, and they may not be uh, guaranteeing the loan. And we may say because of the uh, analysis we've done, because of the risk assessment criteria we have in place, that we believe you need a form of guarantor. So all of these are not cast in stone. It all depends on the dynamics of the business. Uh, the growth stage of your business and uh, how you're faring. I like what you said about uh, looking at your cash flows, looking at your financial statements. You know, uh, these are the detailed analysis we do. And in some cases, when we even see that you have receivables, uh, that you have, uh, for instance, uh, an offtake agreement with a company or uh, a purchase order, uh, we may not have to look at any form of security or collateral. Or even the referee, we just say, okay, with what you have in place, you know, we believe uh, the credit risk uh, has been fully mitigated and then we can go ahead. So referee in this case uh, does not necessarily mean um, somebody guaranteeing the loan. But these are details we'll get into uh, with time. So on the interest rates, um, this will be at single digits. Uh, with what is going on in the market right now, if we approach uh, the commercial banks, I believe uh, the interest rates overs and oscillates around 30 to 35 percent. 
Uh, but with what we have in place is single digits. The maximum will be nine, uh, subject to other uh, conditions. You know, so nine percent. It's a single digit. Nine percent will be the highest, and I believe with that, um, a- any viable good business should be able to accommodate that kind of interest rate regime. So that, that's what we think for now. Um, I, I, do, I hope I've answered all your questions, or do we, um, yes. Mr. Harry? Yes. I mean, I mean, well answered. I mean, well answered. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Thank you so much. Um, um, so I, I think more people don't want to ask more questions. I mean, like you said, this is going to be very interactive. I've seen a lot of hands up. So, um, okay, Mr. Collins, so I'm going to bring you up on the call. Hello, Mr. Collins. Hello, Mr. Collins. Yeah, good evening. Can you hear me? Good evening. Yes, I can hear you now. So go ahead. Please just make the Hello, questions just maximum of two questions, please. I can hear you clearly. Let's make the questions maximum of two questions. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, interesting thing. I actually have two questions, and it has to do with the first one has to do with uh, feedback applications to receive either a grant or a loan or a, or equity investment, you know, within what time frame would we be hearing back so that, you know, we don't uh, put our eggs in that, in just the basket of uh, the NIF. And secondly, it would have to be, um, what is the uh, plan in terms of the financing option for grants? Because I, I see that there's not a lot of information on that. It's mostly focused on loans. So feedback, when to hear back, and then how the grants would run. All right. Thank you, Mr. Harry. Um, Mr. Rijo, Mr. Oseni, Mr. Akib, I think let's, let's juggle a little bit. Mr. Oseni, do you want to take this question? Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, uh, for the feedback, um, we will rebut uh, very quickly um, within the space of 30 days maximum. Uh, we're trying to automate the, the process just to, to make sure that uh, the turnaround, turnaround time is um, is as low as possible. Uh, and then with respect to financing of, of, of grants, you know, grants is like um, it's like a free money, uh, but it's come with conditions. So uh, the grants will uh, uh, is something that we have to do with uh, OK to make sure that uh, we're able to achieve that purpose. So we were designing that template and then the conditions that we will be used for, for selection, which is going to be fair uh, and just. Uh, and I'll give you an example. Uh, when you take a loan, for instance, the loan can have some element of grants, but you will not be qualified to benefit from that grant until you have paid, you know, certain percentage of that loan. So, and that will induce performance. Um, so, once you somebody take a loan uh, and um, and somebody take a grant, so what I'm going to do is to make sure that the grant is also part of the loan, and when you pay maybe seventy percent of that loan amount, then the balance can be can be the grants. So uh, we want the money, you know, not to be depleted, so that it can be recycled for the benefit of uh, all Nigerians. We want it to be sustainable. Oh, I hope this okay, so sorry if I may cut you yeah. short and sorry to the host if I may come in. So, um, what is the, is, are you going to, uh, make your decision on if you're going to give the grant based off of just on the face of the application or is it, are you going to reach out to the applicant, you know, to have a full blown conversation with them to understand the nature of the business more? Because I, I, I would assume that the, the portal is just a way to get the person's, the applicant's foot in the door so that you can have a proper conversation on how the, on how f- efficient and reliable the business is to invest in. Yeah, yeah. So we're not just going to rely on the application submitted. Of course, we're going to engage the promoters of the business. We, we need to understand the kind of business that is, the fellow is doing. We need to know the gestation, uh, gestation period for, for those that, um, for those that are starting, uh, sometimes they need patient capital. Okay. Uh, but we don't want the grantors to be abused because grant is like, uh, you just give them the money, let them go and do whatever they want with it. We, we want, um, every beneficiary to, to, to make use of this money 
uh, in the interests of 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 of, of, of the nation. So, so the grants will somehow be connected to a loan, and that is where you can, where you can, where you can have accountability. Okay. So, we are going to look at the form submitted the loan. We are going to sit with the promoters. We are going to understand the nature of their business. We are going to understand their business model. We are going to understand the kind of market where they play. We are going to understand the the cash flow. You know, whether it comes, uh, you know, seasonally or something that comes almost every day. So, these are the things we are going to put into into consideration. But we're going to get back to you on, on the issue of grants. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Collins. Um, thank you, Mr. Sini, for answering the question. Um, more hands, please. We are here to answer all these questions. We've received questions via emails, DMs, through different social media platforms. But now we're trying to make it more engaging. So we need you to ask more questions, very direct questions. Um, and we'll answer you. Anyone open to answer questions here? Okay, so um, before then, before anyone comes back up to ask more questions, um, I think okay, I think I'll let um, Mr. Rashid to join in and um, share a couple of things the ministry has been doing. Mr. Rashid is the aide to the other minister too, and um, he'll be joining in to speak more about this. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Kim. Sorry, Mr. Kim. Yes, I'm here. Go on. Can you hear, can you hear, uh, uh, Mr. Rashid? No, I can't. I... Oh, okay. 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 Cause I, I thought I couldn't hear him too. So I thought to just pull you up on it. Um, let me, let me get in someone else to ask a question. Cause I think maybe there's something wrong with this, Mr. Rashid's audio. So let me, um, pull someone up here. Um, so, uh, Mr. Lamido, I'm going to add you to the call now to ask your questions. Please, let's be very direct with the questions. Maximum of two questions, or if possible, just one question. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, this is Mr. Lamido. Oh no, this is not Mr. Lamido. This is Adibayo Babay Lem. Okay, okay. All right, Mr. All right, go ahead. Please ask the question. Thank you. All right, standing on all protocol, I I want to appreciate you for the opportunity to speak. So here's my question. Um, going through the form, there's a part where it asks. Um, it asks. Um, have you been a part of an existing cluster? And if you click the drop down, it gives you options of different clusters, and it doesn't give you um, it doesn't give you an option or to select whether you're not a, um, you've not been a part of a cluster. That is, I'm literally new to this, and this is my first time applying. I've applied, so however, I just selected an option, and I provided um, more information in the additional informational space to let them know. I've not been a part of the cluster, so I think you can look into that. And um, lastly, for those of us that have filled this form, because I'm actually looking into the aspect of the grants, would we have to fill out another form? Because I hear you talking about bringing out another template or something like that. So what is, how are you going to go about that? Thank you. All right, um, Mr. Rashid, can you take this question? Okay. That way, um, so if you look at the portal and then from our conversation earlier, the end there is not just, is not, didn't just start existing now, it has existed before, and then um, there were clusters before, before now, and then those are identified for existing clusters. And instead of, you know, like you mentioned, and then it's a continuous um, effort. Can you hear us? Hello, Mr. Yes, Rashid. yes. 
Yes, Mr. I can hear. I don't think we can hear you anymore. Uh, Mr. Akim, do you want to take up this question? I think we lost Rashid's audio again. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will take it. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Adebayo, uh, for that observation. Um, we will, what we'll do is to create uh, another line that says, uh, if you are not part of this existing uh, cluster, so that you can say, no, I'm not part of existing, or I want to create another one, so or create a new one. So we'll update that. Uh, thanks for the observation. Uh, not only a lot of people have come back to us on that. So, and then on the grants, uh, as you said, you are interested in the grants. Um, I think uh, it was Mr. Henry uh, that raised the question earlier. And what we've said is that, as it is now, you can indicate uh, in the amount section of the, of the, you know, amount you are looking at to state whether you are looking at a loan equity or grant. But again, we will update this to have a drop-down uh, link that will give you the option to select whether you want loan, equity, or grants. Uh, I don't know if that answers your question, Mr. Uh, Adebayo. Yes, thank you very much. That did. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Adebayo. Uh, would there be any more questions, please? Would there be any more questions? Before then, Mr. Rashid, please notify that you're back online. I know you have a couple of things to say from the office, so um, if you can join back and speak on something on the program. Uh, my audible now. Perfect, perfect. Great. Okay, let me add up a couple of people. Uh, Mr. Rashid, you're going to take this question. Sir. Hello, Mr. Latinji. Hello, Mr. Latinji. Yeah, I can hear you. Good evening. Uh, okay, perfect. Good evening. So, um, kindly share your questions. Remember, maximum of two questions, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity given me this evening. And uh, looking at the program is a good development, and uh, I really appreciate it from the federal. Ministry of Youth Development and uh, I've actually put up with the program and uh, I announced it to my fellow youths on my street because we have an association and I told them if they have a business my business is CAC registered and I believe we can all do better and my own question is this like if I apply uh, after applying for the loan I realize a mail has been sent to us and uh, we drop our BVN and NIN. And sometimes uh, our NIN is always giving us issue for disbursement of fee from the federal government. Because I could remember this 50,000 year grant due to NIN, we were unable to get the money. Understand? So I just believe we can actually do something to not let some of us that are having issue with NIN due to bets and stuff like that to hinder us from getting the fund. So please, that NIN is a serious issue because I believe you can actually help us to say something about it. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Latinji. Also, thank you very much for spreading the word. We truly appreciate it. I'm going to let uh, Mr. Rashid answer this question, please. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you. Um, like we said, if if if, the, if you look at the review of the previous um, uh, disbursements, and if you look at other um, other projects or implementation plan and um, uh, funding opportunities and all of all those things that has been done in a couple of years so far, there, there has always been a challenge of accountability and. If you ask every, anybody, even those listening here, and uh, a lot of people have lost faith in um, accountability, and then there's only the question of how uh, people found some people did not get it, and all of that. And everybody has always been asking for uh, transparency. 
So and we all know that uh, the only form of doing that, and it's not just we putting it there, actually. It is a standing order that every social investment program or project has to be accounted for. So the best way to do this, to make sure that some people are not cheated out of it, is to make sure that every Nigerian, that is every Nigerian that is participating in this are actual Nigerians, and that no Nigeria is more Nigerian than any Nigeria. And it is important also to note that if, if for, for example, if you are the one that has applied now and somebody is using your details or some other people are using details that are not genuine, and you are losing out, I'm, I'm sure you will. Yes, I can actually get that very well. Yeah. So, okay, Mr. Latiji, so uh, your uh, your concerns have been noted. Uh, we'll see how to improve this going forward. Um, you, right. you know, we we'll typically need uh, a form of identification for these types of schemes. So, head by head, if that doesn't work well, maybe BVN, but we'll, we'll work around it. Um, we, 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 we are not perfect as it is right now, but we'll perfect things as we move along. Yeah, I think I, I will actually appreciate it if you can yeah. go back on it, because duly people have spread it a lot and people are really, really going for it. And uh, it's a medium for me to tell them that, yeah, we still have faith in everything that the government is doing, that if this thing can be implemented as much as possible. Thank you. That concerns noted, we'll address it going forward. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Latunji. You put up a very, 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 very valid point. Um, for what we know, um, the form is just the first stage. There are a whole lot of processes in terms of um, getting getting verification. That's why we asked for, for two, two um, um, details from you, your BVN and your NIN. One has to work, at least. One has to work. So I'm calling um, Mr. Abdul on the call to speak now. Mr. Abdul, are you there? Mr. Abdul, are you there? Hello, Mr. Abdul. Okay, I think Mr. Abdul isn't here. Um, adding Mr. Fayawo. Please, let's try to make this very interactive as possible because your feedback is what will make us um, succeed in what we're trying to do. The Honourable Minister has put together an awesome team. As you can see, the leadership of the whole National Youth Investment, Nigerian Youth Investment Fund is currently on the score and willing to take on any, any, any question. So be, be very direct ask the question, let us solve the problem, let us bring you up to speed with what we're working with and all. Mr. Firewall, can you open, unmute yourself and um, speak? Thank you. Okay. Um, good evening. Good um, evening. Please, I I checked um, the website and um, and um, the fund encourages um, new business ideas, but there's a part of the form that requires that um, you upload your CAC documents or state level registration or community development association certification. I'm done. Hello. Hello. Okay. Um, Mr. Oseni, Mr. Rijo, anyone wants to take that question, please? Uh, uh, okay. Um, can you hear me? 
Hello? Hello? Can anybody hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. We oh, can. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So, so, so thanks for, for that question. Um, uh, yes, we, we made room for startups, uh, for new businesses. Um, but you also know that, um, uh, the, the, the corporates and allied matters acts require that every business needs to be registered. So it is essential that we have, uh, the registration either as an incorporated, com- incorporated company or as a business name or in the list as a cooperative society, which is required to be registered with the Ministry of the Local Government, I think. Um, and this is also part of KYC, uh, getting to know who you are dealing with. Uh, it's also necessary for, for record purposes. Uh, you can't give money to individuals, so they have to be registered. So it doesn't matter that um, you have not been in business before now, but what is very key is that you demonstrate sincerity. Uh, you demonstrate that this business that you are going to, you have the required capacity to run it. You are not just taking advantage of the fact that the government is willing to give money to the youth. Um, so there must be a demonstration, a demonstration of, um, capacity of sincerity, willingness, you know, to run that business and also to make a service out of it. Uh, and let me also say this. Uh, we know that it's a bit difficult to run business anywhere in the world. So businesses can fail. Okay. But it must not be because, um, we, we did not give the required support. That's why it failed. And where a business is also having challenges, uh, this program has made provision, you know, for, for support, you know, to make sure that whatever challenges that they are passing through at any point in time, it may not even be funding, it could be capacity, it could be resource, you know, uh, it, could, it could be that uh, maybe the required talents are absent or whatever reason. So this program has made provision that along the line, whatever support that is needed, and that's why we talk of the handholding, will also be provided along the way. Hope this, hope this answers our questions. Yes, thank you very much. It does. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Hussein, for answering this question. Thank you, Mr. Fawo, for bringing up this question, and I hope you've also applied, and um, we hope that you are. You're also selected and you have your CAC ready. I think CAC has put out new policies to make, um, the whole process of getting registered seamless. So, um, Mr. Tolu, I'm bringing you up to ask, ask your question, please. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Tolu. I am calling from Braining Kebi, Kebi State. Right. I am um, into rice processing and rice production. We have a factory in Kebi State. So uh, we were one of the early birds who who happened to jump on the on the registration when it came out. So, I mean, uh, barely three hours, we I, I registered. And then going back to the portal, I see that a lot had been updated. Does that invalidate? Does that uh, invalidate our previous um, uh, registration do we have to go back and re-register because most of the things that are there now were not there earlier before and number two are there like license officers or people that are responsible for follow-up or is everything going to be done strictly online right that is my question and then uh, how how what is the preference I mean, what is the what is the assurance that youths, especially youths of northern extract who are in the north, would actually be able to assess these grants? Because most of the times we have had issues go, uh, before where we have we have not been able to assess uh, some of these grants. It didn't fully come to us. And finally, um, do are there going to uh, is there going to be any form of due diligence on the part of the of the ministry? And how does uh, previous loan facilities affect your eligibility. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tolu. Um, these questions, I'd like to throw them to Mr. Akim. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tolu. 
uh, from Brendan Kirby. Um, the first issue you raised is about updates that's happened to uh, the application portal. So um, you may, I, I'll just say, in this case, you may please update uh, whatever you submitted earlier and resubmit. And uh, you, you may put in notes. You know, we have sections where uh, we said if there's any other information you want to provide, additional information, you know, you can just provide some details there and then we'll, we'll see how to, to go about it. But you, we, we've noted your name now and we've noted the, your business operational area and we'll see what we can do to, uh, to fast track uh, whatever you submitted or whatever you may have updated uh, going forward. Uh, because in our database now we'll be able to see uh, whether you've actually submitted earlier. And if that's the case, then, you know, we will take that into confidence going forward when we are looking at the updated uh, um, application form. So in terms of licensing officers, um, the way this program is being managed is we have to work uh, with some uh, partner financial institutions. Uh, for instance, in Kebi, whether you are bringing Kebi or Arugugu or uh, wherever, uh, we'll look for um microfinance banks or commercial banks uh you know that have good rating uh based on our own um, um index uh, assessment criteria uh, we we'll select uh, one or two that would be uh, the bank or the financial institution through which we will do the disbursements so they are closer to you there they will be able to come look at your business uh, they will be able to monitor what's going on on a daily basis and be able to advise us on what is going on. That provides uh, a more effective uh, uh, feedback mechanism in terms of uh, monitoring and evaluation. And uh, for this uh, fund, we won't disburse all the funds to you at once. We'll do it in phases. So if there are issues down the line, they are able to quickly advise us and we'll put in place correction and mechanisms. And to ensure that um, uh, the loan is up and running and you meet your obligations as I went do. So we'll be working with these partner financial institutions that are closest to you, wherever you are across the country. Um, on the issues about uh, where you're from, um, on this scheme, it doesn't matter to us where you come from. What is of most importance is your business location area. For instance, you are now in Braden Kirby. So, uh, like I said earlier, the financial institutions we are partnering with will come see you, look at your businesses, and we're able to make a decision. So, even if you are from, uh, you know, where you are, I could see from the name that maybe you are from the Southwest. It doesn't matter to us. It's the business location that matters. And then, um, on the issue about due diligence, yeah, that has to be done. Uh, we'll look through your uh, profile, look through and loans you've taken in the past. Uh, we have credit bureaus that we work with. And in line with the CBN directive, we have to check with at least two credit bureaus to see that you are not hoeing. And if you are hoeing, we'll, we'll come to you, discuss with you on the reasons why you are hoeing, and then we will be able to make a decision based on that. So previous loans, yes, we'll look at that, see if you have non-performing loans. And, uh, you know, we all know the situation in the country. Um, a lot of uh, goods are available, a lot of uh, stock are available for producers and manufacturers and due to the hardship, um, many people don't have the purchasing, purchasing power to take off uh, all this stock. So these are things we'll look at. It's part of the due diligence process. We'll do an assessment and we'll be able to, to make a decision. So don't be scared if you have any non-performing loans. That doesn't automatically mean we'll say no, but we'll look at your circumstance and treat um, um, any case we come across on, on a case-by-case -case basis. So that, that that's it. I, I hope that works for you, Mr. Tolu. Hello, Mr. Tolu. Hello, Mr. Tolu. Okay, I think Mr. Tolu is off. I'm sure that works for Mr. Tolu. And um, thank you very much for joining in and um signing up on the applying for the for, for the for the fund much earlier right now in about four days we've already had over a hundred thousand applications so you can imagine the the 
the workload we have and the excitement we have also because our goal is to make sure we are we are making sure the youth for the for, of the country are excited and ready to get businesses rolling because the truth about it is that the businesses in the country right now are um um what's it called businesses of, of the country currently need these funds and the honorary minister has made sure we increase the funds from 75 billion naira to 110 billion naira which was approved by the fec and also um I mean, I really, really know that before the end of the next two weeks, I'm sure we're going to be having up to 500,000 people on this front. And um, I think the Honorable Minister will be joining this call very soon. Um, I'm going to give one more person to ask a question before the Honorable Minister joins this call. So would there be any further questions to to come up so we could pull you up to ask your question before the old minister joins in? Okay, Mr. Mr. Rijo, Mr. Saini, Mr. Akim, would there be any other extra thing you want to share on the call to, for the people so they get more updates? Uh, not for me for for now. Not okay. for me. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm also good. All right. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, would there be any extra questions? Then okay, I see Mr. Olabanji. So let me add as a speaker. There's a hand from uh, Oliver too, Chief Oliver. Yeah. Okay, Oliver. Okay, uh, Mr. Olabanji, are you there? Oh uh, yes, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Am I audible you know? Of course you are. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for bringing me home. So, quick one. I don't have much to say. I just want to ask uh, about uh, another initiative on the I saw on the you know on the website the the uh, what was it called? Oh, I think I forgot to. Uh, all right, let me quickly ask this other one while I check for that. So, um, I wanted to ask, how is the implementation for, you know, for the disbursement of this loan? How is it going to go? So, uh, why am I asking that? Is I'm asking in terms of figures now, right? So, what what is the total number, you know, you, the ministry is looking at to, you know, total number of beneficiaries? You know that will benefit from this, you know, from this, uh, uh, this fund, this loan, right? And then how is it going to be segmented into, you know, uh, speaking of batches now, right? So, the first batches, this is the total number of, you know, uh, beneficiary you are looking at. The second batches, and how is it going to go, right? So, yeah. So that was the main question concerning the loan fund. Then the other question I wanted to ask is. Um, uh, Protection. Sorry, please uh, let me quickly check it out on the site. Uh, uh, then yeah. Mr. Is okay, it's about the other initiative, the Young Leader Institute. So I just want to, you know, learn more about the Young Leader Institute. What is the initiative all about? Because there's no too much of information about about it on the site. All right. So thank you. That's my question. Okay. All right. Um, you. Um, thank you for that wonderful question. He asked about um, the initiatives that uh, that the ministry is currently that are currently ongoing. Uh, and for the Young Leaders Institute, um, the Young Leaders Institute is an institute that is supposed to do, uh, engage young people in leadership skills and empower them and teach and give them some of these skills that will help them raise and develop and nurture the ne next generations of leaders for the country. So it's a place to mentor young people into leadership skills and then find an avenue of um, uh, making sure they're incorporated into leadership position. And if you remember, um, just some months ago, the Federal, uh, Federal Executive Council 
by the request of the Honorable Minister of Youth Development of Yamila, and got an approval uh, by the President to assign 30% for the 30% youth quota. So uh, if you want to have um, young people um, engaged in leadership positions in Nigeria, it will also be beneficial for us to create a mechanism to groom, mentor, and um, help these young people attain this leadership position. So the Young Leaders Institute is going to happen in different strata of engaging young people to 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 develop and nurture them into generations of leaders and also to provide them with um, structure of actually understanding how to lead institutions, you know, give them those skills and, uh, and opportunities for them to participate and also lead in uh, um, uh, strategic uh, national development structures and strategies. So, you know, if you if you are looking at, um, if, like for example, like John Mr. mentioned yesterday, the town hall meeting, where we have, uh, where, where we achieve the 30% quota, and then we highlight that uh, in a in probably a government institution where you have about 30% young people in that institution, you know when you are talking about the needs of young people, these young people will be able to relate to it and they'll be able to make decisions while they are at the table. So um, that is what the Young Lizards Institute is um, providing. Although we are still working on the structures to make sure these are available for every young person, but soon enough um, it will roll out and you get much more meta information. Uh, you also asked about the National Youth Skills Program. So is that, is, it's, it's the program to empower Nigeria youth with relevant skills and provide them with certifications to excel in the modern workforce and contribute to national development. So we identify skills relevant for development in the 21st century and um, give young people this training. And if you notice or if you find out, we have what we call the new development centers across um, Nigeria. So these institutions in partnership and collaboration with state and other stakeholders Will be an avenue to provide skills, teach young people, uh, young people with, and equip them with several skills that they can use to, you know, achieve and grow in their career. And beyond that, use it to empower themselves. And for those that want to be innovative, that want to uh, be investors, that want to venture in all sorts of um, programs. So, it, it, these are programs that we believe that when you equip young people with the skills of the 21st century. And then we'll be able to start talking about our Nigeria Agenda 2050. We are looking at development agenda for 2025. And then we say we are meeting the African Charter Quota. Uh, we're also reaching the SDG 2030. So, and if you look at all our plans, we, we have to align it with our agenda. So these are the things and the structures and programs that we need to actually put in place. So the skills have to be there for us to reach those quotas, especially in in uh, manufacturing and providing infrastructure, tech, and all of that. So as the world is moving, we need to equip young people to be able to match up with their peers across the globe um, and also utilize these skills to achieve much more better uh, growth and opportunities for them. Thank you. Uh, the, right. second, the second question is not answered. Sorry. The... Okay, so what's, can you kindly... Um, Repeat the second question again. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm asking about... Uh, hello? Okay. Okay, Mr. Hello, yeah, so we, we, we got your question, Mr. Labaji. Okay, okay. Perfect. okay. Yeah, so you talked about implementation and disbursement. Um, like uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Ezekiel, said earlier, uh, we are looking at um, uh, 30 days from now for, for the first set of uh, beneficiaries. Um, and then, you know, it's ongoing, it's revolving as people get access to these funds and they pay back. We do a lot more. So we have an initial uh, fund size, uh, which will be further increased uh, by the Federal Executive Council. So um, in terms of the total number of beneficiaries, uh, we are not able to say uh, that uh, this is the number we'll do by social dates. Uh, it's a case of quality vis-a-vis uh, -vis quantity. Uh, the last thing that was done uh, some years back, um, I think over 30,000 uh, youths benefited from the scheme. And uh, the non-performing loan 
uh, um, ratio or percentage is so high. Um, right now, we are focused on impacts. Uh, impacts um, in terms of uh, quality of disbursement, in terms of uh, utilization of fund, and what we are able to see uh, in terms of economic growth and development um, for the youth. Um, and it's not about the numbers. So we will take our time to do a proper risk assessment to ensure that the loans disbursed come back as I went due. So uh, we are not going to take so long or necessarily. We won't spend too much time on the application. But like you said, we have a robust uh, risk assessment criteria, uh, which will allow us to sift through the number of applications quickly. And then we are able to, you know, um, disburse these monies uh, in terms of loans, equity, and uh, and grants uh, to beneficiaries. So uh, I hope that answers your question, uh, Ms. Olabanji. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Akim, and um, thank you, Mr. Olabanji. So the Honourable Minister of Youth Development, Dr. Jamila Ibrahim, is currently on call. She's going to join in now to give a closing remark and maybe answer one or two questions too. Thank you. Good evening. My apologies for the late, um, for joining late and my apologies as well for the delay in speaking. Looks like I had my mic was muted. I don't know if you can hear me, please. Yes, Honorable Minister, we can hear you. Okay. I I thank you greatly for joining this Twitter space, um, taking out time to join us. And I want to say a very good evening to everyone, to the um, staff of the Federal Ministry of Youth Development and uh, the team supporting the Office of the Honorable Minister of Youth Development, the NEF PMO, um, and my distinguished um, young persons and participants on this Twitter space. I thank you for joining the space. And um, it's one of the important engagement channels. Space is one of the important engagement channels um, we will be using as a ministry to engage young people and F carry everyone along in our quest to retool the youth sector. The, the relaunch of the and implementation of the restructured National Youth Investment Fund by the Federal Ministry of Youth Development marks a, a, a moment in Nigeria's economic development with youth innovative ideas at the core. Well, following, um, following my assumption of office as Minister of Youth Development, we embarked on a restructuring of the existing Youth Investment Fund program, which was a program that was approved by um, the Federal Executive Council during the time of President Muhammad Buhari. And um, we at the administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu did a review under my leadership in the Ministry of Youth Development, did a review and assessment of all programs and initiatives of the ministry and we came up with, um, we realized that the NEF was one of the most viable programs and initiatives, and it shouldn't be scrapped. As a matter of fact, it should be improved upon. And the, the, the committee, I set up a technical committee to review the fund, and um, the committee came up with, with um, recommendations that we took to the Federal Executive Council. And um, the Federal Executive Council graciously um crowned our efforts swiftly by the approval for the substantial expansion of the program with an initial seed capital of $110 billion, um, in, for the 2024 fiscal year, which a fund, this was a fund that was initially a $75 billion fund for, um, for, for over three years, meaning that um, $25 billion was to be disbursed of each, for each of the years. However, the administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's renewed hope agenda for youth development has actually facilitated that um, this fund be um, expanded and disbursed in the 2024 fiscal year. So this demonstrates an unprecedented commitment by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, enabling millions of young entrepreneurs to, to turn their innovative ideas 
into thriving businesses capable of creating jobs and driving sustainable economic growth at us for all. So this fund actually empowers young people to be creators of employment beyond just being seekers of employment. Or oh, yes, and so without any doubt, this youth enterprises would engineer the actualization of the trillion dollar economy of um, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. It's an ambitious um, uh, 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 endeavor, but with the economic reforms and all the mechanisms that the government is putting in place under his leadership, I believe that um, this uh, can be achieved. The trillion dollar economy can be achieved. And, and there's also a remarkable step that um, this administration has made through the Federal Executive Council by approving as well the trade of oil, uh, uh, the, the um, petroleum products, uh, local trade, improving local trade um, of crude in Naira. I believe that also is another groundbreaking decision, a bold decision by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to reposition Nigeria's economy, especially through one of the country's major natural resources. The overwhelming response to the Youth Investment Fund we launch with almost 100,000 applications in the first 72 hours reflects the eagerness and readiness of the industrious young people of our great country. And I believe that all of us are on this call who want to make some, make a difference, who want to make it, who want to be contributors to Nigeria's development, especially economically. Well, so to um, the industrious young people of our great nation, to take advantage of this opportunity, as a matter of fact, it underscores the urgent need for such support to bolster the entrepreneurial spirit of Nigerian youth. The Youth Investment Fund will create focused financing and funding mechanisms for youth-enabled businesses, innovations, and to keep our youth gainfully engaged in productive ventures. To maximize impact, the program has been restructured to focus on existing high-potential businesses and to create strategic clusters that will generate up to 2 million direct and indirect jobs in three years. And I believe that, and I, 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 I listened in a little bit, but I, I think at some point the um, presidential initiative on youth enterprise clusters, which uh, the NUF is a funding mechanism for, basically was um, mentioned and uh, the robust explanations that were made. But even if we're not clear, I'm still, I'm here to respond. However, if we're not uh, clear on some of the responses, I'm here to respond to any questions that you may have for me. So let me reiterate that our government, which is your government, requires the importance of partnership recognizes rather the importance of partnership and collaboration in achieving these goals. All stakeholders, including government at all levels, the private sector, the youth groups, the traditional and religious leaders, civil society and media are urged, and individuals as well, individual citizens are urged to join us in mobilizing young people across all social strata to benefit from the Youth Investment Fund, because this fund belongs to everybody, regardless of your social, your background, regardless of um, your academic qualifications, because it also has made provision for young people in the informal sector. And I've seen as well concerns being raised about um, the Corporate Affairs Commission registration, like I mentioned during the town hall meeting yesterday in Abuja with North Central Youth that there's something for everyone. So do not feel discouraged or do not feel turned down because the scheme is not designed to turn anyone away or turn anyone down. Wherever, even if you have applied and you did not receive funding support, there are other forms of support that can be received, such as capacity building. We will also allow you, we'll also explain to you basically um, why you were unable to qualify for the grant at the time. But what will happen is we will hold your hands, mentor you, build your capacity to ensure that you pass through to the next 
in the next um, uh, disbursement, or we will find a way to ensure that um, your business model or your 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 passion basically is um, you know supported. It may not be through entrepreneurship but through capacity building initially to you know to prepare you for entrepreneurship because we understand that this is a huge gap for um, of en- entrepreneurship development for young Nigerians. So we will also support you to provide access to market. And um, yes, that I just wanted to let us know. And in this, in the in the event that you probably. Um, got to the website and you found out that um, they're asking you for a CAC document, please do not be discouraged. The purpose is that we need, we require a CAC document, right? But in addition, uh, because we require that you submit a CAC document, but in the event that you're unable to do that, we're, we're working in partnership with the Corporate Affairs Commission. We will ensure that we support you, handhold you through the process of getting your business registered, right? So that we can now see how you can enroll. So this is just an example of a situation where, um, you know, that's an example of how people might feel that um, they will be excluded. The fund is an all-inclusive fund. It's there to support and to provide an innovative financing solution, basically, to young people's enterprises. So... Um, together, we can all foster an environment, a safe space for young people, where young entrepreneurs are given the necessary support to thrive, to drive economic growth, and build the desired future for our great nation. I thank you very much for listening. I really was looking forward to have, you know, being the first to address and um, to set the tone for the discussion. But um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that. But I'm here and I'm ready to take questions um, from the House. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Um, if you have any questions to ask, kindly raise up your hands. So I would add you to the call so that we could... So you ask your questions. So can you raise up your hands? Then, um, okay. Hello, Mr. Ali. Hello, Mr. Ali. Okay, looks like Mr. Ali has audio issues. Mr. Collins, are you on the call? Hello, Mr. Collins. Yes, um, so I, I wouldn't say that I have a question particularly, but I just wanted to you know, just uh, give a few words, uh, probably recommendations as well to the Honourable Minister who's on the call, if that's okay. All right, please go ahead. Yes, so um, thank you very much, Honourable Minister, for, you know, um, coming on board uh, on this call. It really shows your commitment to, you know, trying to see that you upgrade and upskill businesses of the youth, because as we already know, the youth and um, and as well as medium and small scale uh, enterprises are at the heart of our economy and I, th- I think that's something that we have to comment but what I would like to suggest is that you know while this program is uh, going on you sort of have some mechanisms to to show to the people that there's some form of accountability in how mm. the program is run uh, because you know many many times in the past you know we've had similar schemes like this and you know especially with how palliatives are distributed and you know there's no form of um, accountability or some form of like should I say update for the people to see how these things are dispersed and how it's impacting lives as well so it's already a good initiative that you've started it but I want to I I believe that if we if we're able to be accountable with it in terms of, you know, maybe engaging more with the spaces. The space is a good idea. 
engagement with these spaces, try to put out um, content on social media as to, you know, the progress of the fund, how far it's doing, um, how many people have been, have received the fund, uh, how well are the loans performing, uh, you know, just w- within that context, uh, within, within those lines, basically, um, you know, if we can, since you're engaging with the youth, you can, you can sort of make use of things that, in, um, mechanisms that engage the youth so that they can see that, you know, these funds are actually put to use. And when you call out for future applications, they will be encouraged to, you know, apply. So you don't want a situation whereby, you know, people have jumped on the opportunity now and then there's no form of feedback or no form of accountability. Next time when things like this come up, I believe, I think there will be some sort of um, apathy towards it. So that's just my suggestion. Kudos to the team. Kudos to the the Ministry of Youth Development. This is a great initiative. And I hope that it it, it brings the result that you're seeking to find. Thank you so much, Collins. Um, Your words are very encouraging. Thank you so much. And yes, your concerns are very valid about accountability and avoiding res- the, the 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 mistakes that um, we have made in the past as a country. Yes, um, we because you see reasons why there has been minimal there have been engagements in the past. As a matter of fact, we've engaged with several youth groups who have approached the ministry, um, but at some point we realized that. If we continued to engage, we needed to take a break from engagement at some point because continued engagement, we were engaging, but we weren't solving problems. We weren't addressing issues. So the engagements were like a repetition of the same problems being presented. Okay, poor access to capital. You know, young people felt like uh, has have not been empowered and all of that. So it was really... A bit, um, it just, it, we just had to get to a point where we realized that, okay, having engaged for some time, the first couple of months in office, then it was now time to actually go down to the drawing board and profess solutions to these challenges because the engagement was going to continue and we're not going to have time to get down to the business of, you know, youth development. So that was one reason for that gap. And with the added fact that as a young person, Governments, uh, successive governments have come and dashed my hopes personally as a young person. They've, I mean, we, we, we went to the polls, we voted for people, we were excited that we were going to see a country of a Nigeria of our dreams. But um, along the line, during implementation or when people assumed office, we didn't see what we were hoping for or they had made commitments that, you know, they were under pressure to make. And then when it came to implementation, I mean, they realized that they had actually created a demand without a supply. So being at the driver's seat, I was really committed to not being that kind of leader who would come and make robust policy statements without any facts or any, you know, actual implementation I mean, without actionable plans and implementable plans, like make sure that it is a realistic thing that we can actually implement, see impacts that we can measure and, you know, and just uh, transform things, basically. So um, that was another reason for the silence. And then now this program is ready to be launched. It's been launched, rather, because I'm saying ready to be because it happened around the, the launch happened around the agitation period but FEC had approved it about um, in March so we were just trying to ensure that we followed due process put all the necessary structures in place right for people to enroll so I really think that it's a bit, it's it's actually a coincidence that it has happened and then at this time but it was a program that should have been launched earlier than now and we were working very hard to have seen that it was launched earlier than now. And speaking now to the implementation, uh, the, the monitoring and evaluation of this program and, you know, feedback and transparency, accountability to the citizens uh, as we did, as um, we have earlier uh, stated, 
Well, because we don't, again, want to say that this is this uh, M&E strategy that we want to deploy, but I would just give us a hint, basically, because it's important that um, these questions will keep coming up. So it's important that I just address it a little bit. So the, the, the proposed strategy for monitoring and evaluation is that we're trying to see the possibility of having a show, a reality show, where people will come and tell their success stories and we'll begin to see and hear testimonies and watch testimonies that these are real people on the ground. These are businesses owned and run by young people, supported by the Federal Ministry of Youth Development through the Youth Investment Fund or other, you know, interventions of government. So that's one approach. And I believe that reality doesn't lie. Numbers will not lie as well. So I, 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 um, I thank you so much um, once again, Collins, and uh, I, I hope that um, we can be able to walk this path together, um, work with me to serve you uh, better. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Honourable Minister. Yeah, I appreciate your feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Collins, for the question. Thank you, Honourable Minister, for the wonderful answer. Um, we have Mr. Adedui on the call. Please, yes. can you ask your question? Thank you. Okay, yeah. Um, good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to just uh, make a quick um, statement. Um, honestly, to be like to be sincere, this is actually what a whole lot of people have been looking forward to. Um, the opportunity to engage with, you know, the youth ministry, the youth minister, because to a large extent, right, um, there has been a pandemic of false information, propaganda, right? So regardless of whatever the, um, the ministry is putting out, those false, those false information, those propagandas are targeted at ruining whatever achievement the ministry is making. So to a large extent, if we don't get those engagements, right, people that are rooting for the administration, people that are rooting for the president, people that are rooting for the minister, wouldn't have anything to to use as tools to be able to fight those um, propagandas, right? So I just wanted to commend um, her interaction today. And I'm as I'm, I'm, I mean, I must be honest. I'm, I, I'll definitely raise my hands up that I've been critical of the youth minister. I've been critical of the youth ministry, and to a large extent, it's easier when you're on the outside because you don't have as much information in terms of the challenges that they face on the inside. So um, I wanted to take that minute to apologize for that, and you know, <laughs> going forward if we can have more things like this. And the, the honest truth is that we don't necessarily even need the minister's presence all the time, right? Mm -hmm. But let's find let's find a common ground whereby people who are rooting for you to succeed, people who are rooting for the administration to su succeed, can have all the information that they need to be able to beat their chest and say that, okay, I stand with this person and whatever propaganda is levied against this person, you know, we can fight to a nil. Then at that point in time, you can focus on what you do and the people on the other side can focus on what they do. So um, I'm looking forward to more engagements like this. It doesn't necessarily have to be the minister in person. It could be anybody that you delegate. But that engagement, carrying people along, is going to go a long way. So that's just the, what I wanted to say. And once again, apologies for being so no, hard of a critic on, on the outside. Brother, it's but fine. let us know your challenges, right? Let us no know your problem. challenges and this whatever we can do to help. I accept yeah. the benefits and I accept also that, you know, the, the challenges that come with it, the, the, the liabilities that come with leadership. So it's fine. No hard feelings at all. So, so we look forward to seeing you physically at the ministry one of these days, if time permits, or perhaps we meet again on another space. Okay. Much appreciated. Thanks. Yes. And thank you for your support. Okay. Thank you, Mr. doing for the question and for the whole feedback. Your critic and everything you've been doing so far. Yes. Yes. Um, Mr. Adedoye, I um, well, 
like you, um, I said earlier, yes, you've also stated the fact that um, communication is important, engagement is important. And I acknowledge that, yes, there's been a gap in communication. And, um, well, we're making up for that because we have actually de designed a very nice, a very robust communication strategy. And um, in the coming days, we would actually be seen to be engaging more. And it, uh, a page has been, uh, I mean, the, there's a page actually, the Office of the Honorable Minister of Youth Development, which, you know, can be used to engage. But we, beyond that, we have other portals um, for engagement and we have a, a comprehensive strategy for communication with the ministry and her programs and initiatives. So in the coming days, you would actually see a huge difference in our communication. But you see, if we were busy communicating, I believe that all our brains, our minds, um, you know, the, our, our minds would not really be preoccupied with, you know, the strategy, the technicalities and all of that. But we've gone through that phase. We've done all the brainstorming and we have come up with, you know, our implementation plans and all of that and a robust youth development strategy as well. So if we were busy engaging on platforms, I believe that, yes, it is true that we could have actually got struck a balance between the two. But let's not forget that strategic communication also requires a robust funding and the ministry has a funding gap, a funding challenge. Um, the budget is not very youth responsive and I also call on everyone to continue to advocate for youth responsive budgeting to ensure that the ministry meets up to the mandate that is expected of her. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, we have Mr. Jafar Bello. Mr. Jafar. Hello, Mr. Jafar. Okay, I think he pulled out of the call. Um, Mr. Akim, you're on the call. Do you want to share any other thing on, on the call too while we bring in just one more person to ask a question and then we we'll go? Uh, not for now. I, I believe uh, Honorable Mr. has covered uh, most of the grounds and the missing gaps. Thank you. All right, perfect. So I'll try to add one more person. If the Honorable Minister permits me, one more person, then we can go ahead. Oh, yes, please. Okay, um, um, Temi Dayo, please, can you kindly join the call to ask your question, please? Thank you. Hello, Temi Dayo. It looks like um, Temi Dayo is, has dropped off the call. Please feel free to ask the other minister any question. She would answer your question perfectly. Trust me. So please feel free. Mr. Sheyi, are you on this call? Yes, I am. Perfect. Please kindly go ahead to ask your question to the other minister. Thank you. Many thanks and uh, well done to the old team. I will be very Thank direct. You so it's good to reconnect with you again, uh, Minister Ibrahim. Um, and I'm sure you probably recall me from the COP engagement and the um, youth climate um, platform we tried to set up. But that aside, my question okay. here is specifically uh, with regards to the management. And um, I want to know in very clear terms, is there a private sector alignment with how these funds has been managed? Or is it purely government? That's my question. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Shea. I yes, I do remember you. And um, please don't worry, we will um, engage soon. Uh, we'll soon engage rather the the youth um, task force on climate action. 
because there's quite a lot that we need to do in that sector as well to ensure that young people are drivers of climate action in Nigeria. And well, in collaboration with the Line Ministry of, Edu of uh, Environment and the NCCC. Well, the, the management of the fund is, as a matter of fact, there are layers to it. So we have a governance structure because uh, the FEC had approved that we, we, we review the governance structure of the NEF. First layer would be the, uh, the steering, uh, interministerial steering committee. And then there will be an advisory which will compose, uh, which will comp uh, consist, uh, constitute rather private sector, the civil society, including young people and young entrepreneurs as well. So it is not strictly government. Um, there will be uh, a lot of involvement of private sector because we know that government cannot do it alone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Reverend Minister. Mr. Shea, I hope that answered your question perfectly. Uh, I'm fine with it, just so we don't um, keep the minister on the call for too long. Thanks. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. Honorary right, Minister, with your permission, um, we would like to go ahead to end this call. Yes, uh, please. I thank everyone for taking our time this evening to be with us. And thank you for listening. And we, we look forward to a, an even more robust engagement in the future. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. This conversations will continue going on regularly. Today's topic was the Nigeria Youth Investment Fund Program. And the questions have been taken down to notes and we're going to follow up through every single thing. The Honorary Minister is very, very keen on making sure we engage every single youth in the country. So your questions are very, very, very much important to us. Send us DMs, follow the official handle of the Honorary Minister, which is at HMYD underscore Nigeria, right? We also have the National Youth Investment Fund. Follow the handle Please stay and please follow us too on this handle too. A lot of information will be spread on here. We're going to be engaging every other day. The NYF handle is at NYIF underscore NG. Please kindly follow. Mr. Akim, any final, final statements? I know the other minister has go gone ahead to make a final statement, but any final statements? Um, it's just to thank uh, everyone for joining. Thank uh, Honorable Minister for our presence and to ensure, uh, oh, sorry, assure all participants that uh, we'll try and institutionalize uh, acceptable best practices in the management of the fund going forward. Uh, over to you, Chiguze. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Mr. Akim. So on this note, we would be going on to end this call, but not ending the conversation. So the conversation continues. So this conversation was at Nigeria's Investment Fund, as Elias said, but we're going to continue discussing about more programs. There are a lot more programs from the Ministry of Youth Development, not just the Nigeria's Investment Fund. There are many more. Ask us more questions, send DMs, we will respond to you. Also, we want every, everyone to go ahead to apply on the website for the National Investment Fund. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for joining the call. Thank you to the great use of Nigeria. Good night.